Hey everyone, welcome back to another Dark Souls 2 lore through. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, for this final episode we're going to read the last descriptions of the items um, related to the boss souls. Uh, I guess we got to read the boss souls themselves, and then we're going to kill all the NPCs. <laughs> so that should be fun. Um, so yeah, I guess the one thing is we have the soul of Nishandra. Um... Let's see what else we need to read. Uh, so I got the Lost Center of the Old Iron King, Freya, Rotten, Looking Glass, Demon of Song, Valstat, the uh, King we read, Dra Guardian Dragon, Ancient Dragon we read, Giant Lord we read. Okay, we read all these. So let's read the Old Witch, the Old King, the Old Dead One, and the Old Pedrick. So what I did was I bonfired a Sedict, and I beat all the Lord Souls again. And so for the Lost Center, I got the Old Witch Soul. For... Um, the old iron king i got the old king soul and for the uh uh rotten i got the old dead one and then for the duke's dear freya i got the old pale drake soul of the ineffable this once magnificent soul continues to exert influence over the land even after the eons have reduced it to these remnants and that's what all, i think all four say so it just indicates um, that um, Isolith is tied, or er, Lost Center is tied to Isolith. Uh, old Iron King is tied to Gwyn, the Old King. Uh, uh, Rotten is tied to Nido, the Old Dead One. And then uh, Freya is tied to Paeldrick, the Seath. Also, I traded this, or. Uh, I got this from someone. I think I did a, this off camera. I think it was a uh, a uh, red phantom that I defeated. But let's read this. An extremely sturdy pitch black great hammer. Colossal warriors staunchly watch over the shrine, ready to defend its resident, or allow one worthy enough to be granted audience. I kept that. Oh, and then I, when I was going through the Shrine of Amana, I found an area I had, like, gone to, and we found the singer's dress. Dress worn by a far-gone muse. We heard that the Emerald Herald was considered a muse. Uh, I don't know if they're related. Offers almost no physical defense, but is blessed with high resistance to magic. These enchanting singers were given song by the great dead one and have little concept of self they live only to sing and will continue singing until they can do no longer um it's something that we kind of learned already okay so let's talk to ornifex here and we'll get all the details on all of the souls that we can trade there's a lot more here I kept the old one, the the souls that we already read in the item box, so these should all be new. I'm just going to check. Uh, well, some, some of them are not new. Okay. So the old pale, <laughs> old pale Drake soul gives us the Moonlight Greatsword, which is interesting because, you know, we were learning from, you know, Benahart that his... Um, sword is the you know one of legend and yet here's the real one moonlight greatsword the blade of the greatsword shines like the brilliant rays of the moon in the oldest legends rarely spoken of today it is said that the sword was born of a great white being the strong attack unleashes its unleashes its strength launching a wave of moonlight so this is the true moonlight greatsword and ben hart's blue sword is not as it seems um I don't know if that's like a great uh, like story that everyone was like waiting on the edge of their seats for the answer for, but here's the final word on it. Moonlight Great Sword is here, and the blue sword, the blue pit, I don't know what it's called, is different. So, Thorn Great Sword, a great, and this is made by the Looking Glass Knight's uh, soul. A great sword forged from the soul of the Looking Glass Knight. Um, fearing something wicked, the king fled the castle and never returned, but his warrior, forever true to his command, stands ready to expunge those who would challenge him. So, again, 
if we hadn't seen Velstad himself, it could be argued that, you know, this guy was Velstad or whatever and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, this is um, um, someone that just tried to protect the king as well. Defender Greatsword. Greatsword wielded by the throne defender. The defender has stood by the throne for ages. Well, it's might be worthwhile. I don't know that there's a lot of lore around the Watcher and Defender. Okay. Made from the soul of the king. Greatsword of Vendra, king of Dring Lake. The strength of this sword is relative to the number of souls possessed by its wielder. One fragment of dark, having taken human shape, became obsessed with the king's soul. Impelled by its own cravings, it sought souls and strove to make the strength of the giants its own. So again, we know that that's Nishandra. So it's interesting because it says one fragment of dark, like, um, like, one thing I didn't talk about in the original because I didn't, I don't know that this is definitive. I don't think that this is universally accepted people talk about menace as being the furtive pygmy and um well, i think we have a lot of room to talk about that in the uh, dark souls 3 but it's interesting because um gwyn broke up his soul and we know that souls can have fragments of them and we know that menace was a you know a, a great soul potentially a dark soul one of the dark souls or a, a soul that is related to the dark soul and so that we have and we also know that humanity are like little shards of the dark soul so one fragment of the dark having taken human shape became obsessed with the king's soul so we'll learn more about it later but we'll definitely learn that a Nishandra is a soul as a shard of manis. Do we have uh do we have a Nishandra soul? What did I not read that? Oh I did not read that. The soul of Nishandra, Queen of Drang Lake. The fragments of the abyss of untold origin nourished their beings by the sides of would-be monarchs. Perhaps they were simply ordeals on the road to kinghood. One day the flames will fade and only darkness will remain. Unless, of course, an heir arrives. Okay, so this isn't as explicit as I was initially thinking. But yeah, the fragments of the abyss of untold origin. We know the origin a little bit. Nourished by beings by the side of would-be monarchs. So, like, they're... You know, we they talk about Nishandra being a shard of Manus. Um, I'm sure there's an item description that we'll read here in a second that might give us a more explicit version of that but let's say that uh, the abyss manis and the dark was all was fragmented we're saying that there are there, are, there there's these beings by the sides of would-be monarchs so you know vendrick in this case you know we might learn of a few more um that that had these ambitions greater than they they, they were they were kind of drawn to these souls of these would-be monarchs. Um, and so they have, um, I don't know, it's kind of an interesting, <laughs> um, like, situation of these shards of menace constantly trying to find the old ones, in a sense, um, the people that either conquered these or whatever. Um, so... Um, yeah, let's continue to read, and maybe we'll get more information. Oops. So, anyway, one fragment of dark, having taken human shape, became obsessed with the king's soul. Uh, we read this. This is the guardian dragon soul. A sword decorated with drake wings. The blade of this sword is split into two and is best swung in smashing motions rather than slices. Drakes are likely descendants of the ancient dragons, and although their strength pales in comparison to what is described in legend, to mere humans, they are still mighty beasts. So again, these are descendants. Um, we talked about descendants of dragons in um, Dark Souls 1, but I think in this case it might be pertinent to kind of talk about how Aldia potentially created the descendants. So, 
an altar great sword forged from the soul of King Vendrick. Only the king knows whether the depiction of the queen is a resentful mockery or an affectionate exaltation. That's a really interesting description. <laughs> Only the king knows whether the depiction of the queen, I guess maybe in the soul, or in the sword itself, is a resentful mockery or an affection and exaltation. Yeah, I guess we'd have to get the Alter Great Sword and look at it to see what that means. But I think probably what at, what the situation is is that the sword itself somehow depicts something about the queen, and we have to decide whether it's mockery or exaltation, which is which is interesting. Old Dead One Soul gives us the Alter Great Sword symbolizing guardianship over the undead crypt. The sword has never seen the light of day and is steeped in dark. Okay. Uh, we read that. Uh, curved Dragon Great Sword. A curved great sword forged from the soul of the ancient dragon. In the Age of Ancients, wow, that's drawing back right directly to Dark Souls 1. The world was unformed, shrouded by fog, as it says in the opening cinematic of Dark Souls 1. A land of gray crags, archies, and everlasting dragons. Wow, not a lot of lore there, but, you know. It, it, it says that this ancient dragon soul is truly a soul of an ancient dragon, because it talks about the world of the Age of Ancients. Chaos Blade, a katana of unknown origin, damages foes, also damages its owner. The peculiar pattern upon the blade suggests the sinister nature of the cursed blade. It is an alluring vortex and a lonely soul. So yeah, we had the Chaos Blade in the original. And I think that the uh, patterns on the blade are probably the uh, kind of runes that represented chaos. So again, just a callback here. Spider Silk. Uh, yep, Soul of the Rotten. Soul of Velstad. Great Hammer of the Royal Aegis. The power of this hammer's blessing has not faded completely, despite it, its being exposed to the dark of the undead crypt. Unleash its latent power with a strong attack. Sir Velstad, known as the Royal Aegis, gave himself to the king in both life and death. That's kind of what we knew already. Although, that implies that Felstad is dead, or at least undead. Old Iron King Soul, we read that. Spitfire Spear, uh, a spear said to have been forged in Aldia, contains the power of a great flame, which is unleashed in a strong attack. The mysterious Lord Aldia secluded himself inside a manor to conduct various experiments. Those invited to the manor disappeared, replaced over time with malformed beasts that roamed its halls. And the rest of Drang Lake now. Uh, old Dragon Slayer Soul. Uh, I don't have that. Okay. Soul of Nishandra. Scythe of Want. A scythe born of the soul of Nishandra. The old one of the abyss was reborn in death, split into minuscule fragments, and spread across the land. After regaining their shapes, they crawled forth, yearning for strong souls in search of great power. So the old one of Abyss is Manus, was reborn in death. I suppose we killed them as the chosen undead, split into minuscule fragments and spread across the land. So uh, as the theme that we kind of that, that I've mentioned but we haven't seen in this playthrough is that the this story and the DLCs all kind of you know they tell the story of like a, a woman coming from a faraway land and corrupting the king. I, in the case of two that I can think of right now, I know that there's there's shards of mana, so I guess this is part of that that you know, the story is is that Manus is, you know, his soul, split into fragments and then carried on in the eons to come. Chime of want. The old one of the abyss was reborn, split into minuscule fragments. After taking the yeah. After taking their shapes, they courted monarchs of considerable power, which they desired to make their own. We'll see more about that in the uh, thing. But you can see Scythe of Want, Chime of Want, Bow of Want. So the want, the wantingness is, you know, 
the dark and and in, in life in humanity as as was kind of spoken about by the ancient dragon a bow created by the soul of nashandra uh, same locate okay. light and dark are two sides of the same coin much like the soul and the curse the beings who presented themselves to those in search of kinghood were drawn to their awesome strength so this is actually the you know I, this is, makes me think of so dark souls one spoke about masculinity and femininity in a certain way with the image of the sun and the image of the moon now they seem to to tie that to light and dark and the soul and the curse and tie those to masculinity and femininity at the same time as i said i'm not sure if the dlc and the main story of this game are a champion of feminism or a anti-feminist message but you know it certainly is about women that come to powerful men and corrupt them and it says right here the beings who presented themselves to those in search of kinghood were drawn to their awesome strength and we'll learn more about those dragon slayer great bull great bow a great bow said to be used to down ancient dragons flying high above the clouds, extremely large for a mere bow, and more destructive than any ranged weapon imaginable. Shooting this bow first requires the grounding of its stabilizing anchor, which takes time and leaves the shooter vulnerable, also requires great arrows. And we saw that. That was just a regular item that we picked up in the um, Dark Souls 1. Watcher's shield, small shield used by the throne watcher, made from an old sacred chime. The watcher has stood by the throne. For, yeah, no different description. Watcher and defender have a lack of any lore whatsoever. Shield of Vendrick, one fragment of dark, having taken human shape, became obsessed with the king's soul. Impelled by its own cravings, it sought souls and strove to make the strength of the giants its own. So, same description, but no, <laughs> no lore. And the King's Mirror, a great shield created from the soul of the Looking Glass Knight, can deflect spells. The Looking Glass at the castle is said to have been a passage to another world. So, yeah. That's what Ornifex has. Um... I want to go just and read straights, but I'm actually going to try and kill Ornifex. We'll see what Ornifex does. As you please. I don't know her fighting style. Very similar to the uh, original crows in the painting of Arviamus, I guess. Low poise. Doesn't have any armor on, I suppose. I realized that I should probably not have done that. Um, it might be that the souls that we get from the DLC, I can bonfire ascetic again, but I won't kill strayed. That was just silly of me. But let's go to strayed. Um, and uh, read the last of the descriptions that he has, and then we'll just go kill everyone else. If I can remember everyone. Alright, come on, straight, let's talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will. Okay. Uh, Mytha, Smelter Demon, Pursuer, Flexile. Okay, Demon of Song. 
a whip born from the soul of the demon of song, covered with strange spots that betray its poisonous effects. The demon's sonorous voice, in stark contrast to its hideous form, is surely intended to lure people close so that it may devour them. Um, that's not the most incredible um, description, but, you know, that is the demon of song. Crystal Soul Spear. So this was a, this was so in the original Dark Souls, the Soul Spear was created by Logan, and the Crystal Soul Spear was also created by Logan, but it was enhanced by what he learned from visiting the archives. So, but this is created by the old Pale Drake Soul, uh, which makes sense. Soul Spear sharpened through crystallization, superior to the most finely sharpened weapons. When wielded precisely, it can take down several enemies at once. And then we have Blinding Bolt, a miracle that creates a giant soul mass and transforms it into a lightning-spouting orb of light. Crafted in ancient times by the god of sun, but later forbidden by the same deity, was it to protect the world from hatred or sorrow? Uh, the only lore I can give this is that, you know, obviously the bolt, this giant soul mass that it becomes a lightning-spouting orb of light, it wasn't available in Dark Souls 1. So it's possible that they're trying to say, oh, it was created by the god out of sun but then forbidden so you wouldn't have seen it in dark souls one i don't know whatever well uh velstad an ancient miracle said to have been devised by warriors who once uh, served the god of sun provides a temporary boost to the attack and defense of his caster and all near nearby allies this is a great um um miracle by the way it takes 25 faith um but um yeah, it's just like a uh, general protection. Um, g gives you defense and boost to attack. It's it's pretty nice, but it's an oath, um, and it's related to the god of sun. I don't know. I wish there was more details on some of this stuff. So, old witch soul, pyromancy that imbues weapon and other hand with fire adds fire damage to the types of damage the weapon already inflicts. Pyromancy and sorcery are said to be like oil and water, but in fact their origins can be traced to a common source. I was going to say, you know, pyromancy and sorcery are very close to each other, um, and it's miracles that really contrast both of them equally. So, eh, flame weapon. Um, a hex that distorts local space. Uh, yeah, the hexer Galea took no apprentice, and it is unclear how the spells were passed down. It is even possible that hexes originated from another source altogether. Uh, I don't... Okay, for a brief moment, no damage can be inflicted. Oh, repel. Okay, that's interesting. So it's like literally invincibility for a while. Um, a hex that transforms its caster's flesh. Temporary... Temporarily reduces received damage, but darkens one's sight. If it cannot be observed, it does not exist. Certainly a common conception, but one with far too many exceptions in this world. <laughs> Alright, cool. Shut up. Alright, so we have to think about all of the uh, um, NPCs in this game. I guess I'm not going to kill absolutely everyone. I'll spare... Oh, I gotta spare everyone, don't I? I didn't realize that I'm probably going to want to do this after I do the DLC. Okay. Let's see, what else do I have here to do? Yeah. So the only thing is the dark pilgrims of dark, but I uh, I don't want to do that right now. Um, I guess I will say right now this will just be a super short episode. Um, I guess I'll kill all the NPCs I can. So like, um, I guess you can't break this table because. <laughs> Shalquar sits on top of it. But yeah, this is the only enemy in the game, or the only NPC that you can't kill, you can't damage. Okay, I'll just go and kill everything that won't provide anything for me. 
uh, so I'll keep Moglin alive, I'll keep um, uh, Melentia alive, and the blacksmith and all that stuff, but I'll kill like Gilligan. Hey, that horse. How will you let off? Grateful little git. So he should have a scimitar. The ambitious little. I'll not go down that easy. <laughs> oh, cool! He, he heals. <laughs> he like lies down on the ground. Yeah, I don't need any of those. Okay, <laughs> that was funny. Uh, definitely we're gonna kill Kale. I mean, who gives a crap about Kale? Really? I can take away half his health? can't see how he fights because he's weak. And we get his helm, which is what we would have gotten if we had to kill him for Navlon. Okay, we're gonna keep all these people alive. Uh, Lysia is dead, I believe, because we killed her with uh, the red eye. Yeah, she's not here. We saw that earlier. I just want to check. Okay. Um, I'm going to kill Rosabeth and uh, Carillion because I don't need to. Uh, I'm not going to level up any of that stuff. I'll keep these two alive because I'll probably need to level up stuff uh, like weapons and stuff. But let's see how. Um, Gonna do anything else? Oh cool, you get a fire seed, but no way to level it up. Alright, Karelian, let's go. Have you lost your head? Nah. Have you the arrogance of the young? Yeah. Oh he has a catalyst like Logan's. Ooh, that's <laughs> he's like a what shield is that? Don't fall off. Okay, so he gives us Northern Ritual Band. That's cool. What on earth are you doing? <laughs> no. Points at us. You come unhinged. Great. Wow, bad timing.
I'll let him fight a little bit more. Unlike uh, the Crestfallen Mergent of uh, Dark Souls 1, he, uh, he's not that big of a deal. <laughs> the the Crestfallen... I keep saying Merchant. <laughs> the Crestfallen Warrior of Dark Souls 1 was actually quite a... was kind of a tough guy if you didn't... Maybe he would be uh, in the beginning of the game, but... Interesting. Steel protection. Uh, I don't. Think we, I don't know if we've read that. I'm pretty sure we have. Oh, it's plus one anyway. Where gains the protection of steel, said to be the ring of a once legendary knight king, Rendell, though his tales are long forgotten, and even the greatly wizened have no recollection of his exploits. Uh, now I have to think about where all the, uh, uh merchants are. Uh, Targary. I, I guess not merchants, but <coughs> NPCs. Definitely gonna kill Targary. challenge really how is that Halberd of Targray, a fitting weapon for a shepherd of lost souls. Those who put faith in an absolute good also believe its existence of the, in the existence of true evil. But to others, the distinction between the two can be quite unclear. Yeah, I mean, Targray always seemed to me to be very, like, distinguishing between the, uh, you know, the Brotherhood of Blood and he... Like, one was completely dangerous, and one was like, and then he was awesome. I don't know. So I guess his description describing about how you distinguish between good and evil is appropriate. Um, yeah, we have a couple here. I think I'm good to kill Macduff. Although I might leave him just because he's a blacksmith. Maybe, just maybe, I'll want to enhance something for some reason. But let's go kill the marionette. I'm sure he'll fight like... Probably just fights like the little, the regular ones. Ugh, way too late. Hmm, we might not be able to parry that. Yeah, I feel like some of those are really well timed. <laughs> I 
and he gives you a rest of coin, as do the other licorice ones. Okay. We're coming along, <laughs> defeating all the NPCs. Okay. Uh, I'll save McDuff. I'll save. Str I'll save Strayed. There's no one in Sinner's Rise. There's no one here. There's Falcon, but we killed him. I think that's good. Oh, and then we'll have a uh, Titchy Grin. What are you thinking? <coughs> that hurts. Well, whose blood will spill first? He has a scythe. Dark. Oops. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. Let's kind of try to. Hood worn by servants of Nar Alma, god of blood, increases souls acquired for each kill, belonging to Tichy Gren. Those who profess faith, faith in Nar Alma have re rejected all that is this world and vowed to travel a path stained with blood. I will say that, you know, in a number of these uh, covenants, you can level up and get unique items, and I'm not doing that. Um, but I think that the overall story and the overall thing of this game doesn't require it. Uh, it'd be nice to do a total 100% run, but um, I don't know if I'm up for it, so. Um, okay, so I'm thinking, oh, well, Chloe Ann is obviously back, and then um, G uh, Gavlon is at a different place. There's no one here. Uh, Magarold. Okay, let's do Magarold. If I miss someone, I'll just do them when I, uh, do the next uh, round. Yeah, so I'm just looking at these statues. I think that's the one in the uh, Lost, the Sinner's Rise, or the you know, Lost Bastille. Cool. Well, have you heard of the shrine? Yeah, well, we already gave you the goodies. Very well. Okay, I'll just defeat you. It's so pathetic, the punch. But what's the meaning of this? So he is the halberd. What is this shield that he has? Oh, the iron one. Yeah, I like that one.
I wonder you get what you get from this guy. Haha! -ha! Covetous Gold Serpent Ring plus one, which we should definitely put on. For now. Alright. Wow, we're getting on here. 40 minutes in. I thought this would be quick. Okay. Uh, we can kill this guy. I don't know that this is all that different but let's do it I'll kill him quicker we don't need to like watch all of his attacks or his armor oh he's gone okay makes sense same covenant nope Okay, um, Fengirl, who we should talk to anyway. I don't know if we can kill him. We'll see. We gotta talk to Fengirl because we. Phoenix Parma. Huh, where. Did we find that? I think we might have. Um. We'll, uh, <clears throat> we beat, we defeated uh, Vengro's body, so we have to speak to him. Um, hopefully we don't get followed here. Yeah, we did. I feel like that didn't happen much in the first one. But anyway, so let's talk to Vengirl. Back again? Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Ah, it was you who vanquished my body. It is my body, you see, and I can sense what happens to it. I do not mourn for it. Good riddance. If you wish for help, Summon me. I'm rusty in battle, but we'll fight by your side. I like how he gives up war, but he's like, oh, because you beat my body, I'll continue to do war. I'm grateful for these peaceful days, but such contentment lies only in... Why must life be... Yeah. Ooh, Red Rust. So I probably should have checked this, but he sells different things. Straight sword of warrior Vengar Alfarosa. This sword was, is battle-worn and terribly rusted, but remains a deadly weapon owing to its incredible weight. Legend has it that it was built to test the limits of the strength of the Ferosa knights. Until Vengar, Vengar swung it about like a wooden plaything, claiming ownership by demonstration. Ah, Red Rest Scimitar. So another one by Van, uh, that was owned by Van Girl. Yeah, same description. The chisels in the face were carved by Van Girl to count the heads he claimed. The shield is terribly rusted and worn, but is but incredibly powerful, as if the deeds of its previous owner have been rubbed off on it. That's cool. Farewell. Okay, well, we'll see if we can. I guess we just murderer now, are you? You fiend. <laughs> okay, so he can't fight back. As you wish. As you wish. Like you say that like you can fight me.
I'm gonna just punch his face to death. Okay, that was Vengar. All right, let's see who else we can. Uh, um, I think that's all here. I don't think there's... Oh! Here. I can't remember his name, but the, uh... The one that's like, uh... Oswald of Kareem. So we did kill some people, so now he... You seek indulgence? Then tell me of your transgression. I killed innocent people for no reason. <gasps> Souls needed zero? What? Then you wish to stand in yeah. such virtuous fortitude is rare. And I sincerely commend it. <laughs> That's weird for who you are. Anyone can be forgiven. Okay. Yeah, so you Cromwell, yes. Then Yeah. Okay. Yep, we read those. Yep, okay. You. Yeah, I will just uh I'll beat you to a pulp with Ooh. my fist. Oh Ooh. Ooh, it's like he likes it. You're a cold beast. Yep. Okay, he has a scythe as well. It's interesting, Velka had a rapier, but like a lot of the dark or like occult things have um um wow, have uh scythes here. And scythes are like a a uh, representation to me of Oops. Like, they they represent workers here, right? Like, the people that work. That would have been a perfect parry and Dark Souls 1. Resistance. Interesting. A protective ring adorned with four blessed gem gems. Oh, so it's it's similar to the spelling. Increases resistance, poison, bleeding, petrification, and curses. Okay, so it's like damage protection and like resistances to like status effects a creation of the lost land of olifus the sorcerer who created this was so powerful that he became widely feared probably navlon or straight okay so let us Done with that. Oh, the Rat King. Let's see if we can kill him. If he comes out. I should have looked at that at the doors of Pharos, but I didn't, so. Enough of that place. 
baseness. Okay. Huh. So you just fight. Can I parry him? Come on. Come on! <laughs> I don't know if you can parry him. You can parry the dogs. Huh. I feel like that should have done it right there. Can you backstab him? No. <laughs> okay, come on. Okay, we're just gonna kill you. And nothing. Okay. Um, and I, I assume it's the same one, so if we went to the Royal Rad Authority or whatever, that would uh, be gone as well. Okay. Uh, now we got, well, oh, gutter. No merchants there. None there. Uh, Williger. I don't know if we can, I don't know if we can fight Williger. I've never done this before. Hey, Sid. Yeah. Okay. They use a great sword. I, I think we saw that before. Why, I don't know why they dropped a great sword. Thought they used a uh, cyan sword. Welcome. Our guests are treated. Tell me. Oh, he carries a lot more stuff now. I also want to see if uh, the pursuers come out here, or if that's is it just strictly new game plus. Okay. Cool, well we can read all of his new his new stuff and then we can kill him. Welcome. Is it try? I guess I'll treat you. Tell me. Okay. A dagger affixed with a black crystal found deep inside the gutter in the black gulch. Heavier than the standard dagger, but with a fine crystal that gives it a smoother slice. Some of the more determined souls exiled to the gutter sought to scale the walls of the forsaken place and walk the earth once again, but failed and wasted away mired in misery and resentment. So these are all, uh, um, like, items that were given to you from pre-order, I believe. Um, I've always had these in my games, but it could be because I bought it before it came out. I don't know. A straight sword affixed with yellow quartz. This long sword uh, was found in the Iron Keep. Breaks easily due to corrosion, but is light and stone flicks very significant damage. In the old Iron King's great Iron Keep was a vast collection of weapons, erected as a display of strength to the world. But they were lost when the king's conceit doomed the castle to sink into a lake of fire. Oh, that would have been a good collection to come across. Flamberge, we saw that. Uh, an axe with an unusual design found, found in the undead purgatory. The chains and spikes wrapped around the axe cause bleeding, but weaken the axe's effectiveness when slashing. Accessories that are added to a weapon for the sole purpose of tormenting foes can often detract from the weapon's natural effectiveness. Interesting. Homunculus mace. I love the word homunculus. 
and uh, my family plays uh, Balderdash a lot, and Homunculus came up, and anyway, look up what a Homunculus is, it's very funny. A pole with lumps attached to it, found in the manner of Aldia, heavier than a standard mace, but with more effective striking, owing to its hard lumps. In the far eastern outskirts of Drang Lake lies an old manor that is now long forgotten, as it should be, for the things that lurk there are better left unknown to that. Transgressor Staff A staff enwreathed in matte blackness, found in the heart of the dark chasm. Oh, so that's part of the Pilgrims of the Dark? I guess. No one knows what lies beyond the dark passages found across Drang Lake, but perhaps they're better left undisturbed. A shield enwreathed in a matte blackness. No one knows. Yeah. Okay. Same description. Same description. A shield. Uh, yeah. Same description. Cool. This is new, right? Oh yeah, no, never mind. Okay. The king of giants. How did you slay that behemoth? Incredible. Now, take these. Never knew this was a thing. Wow. Lilluin. Oh wow. Okay. I didn't. Oh, maybe I didn't know about this. The king had a dear queen. Long ago, the queen came to us. Yeah. The king. Bonso. Okay, so let's read all this stuff. Wow. Royal Dirk. A dagger fashioned from rare guy steel boasting an unusually long blade. Guy steel was a precious alloy created in the eastern land of Mira, its composition long kept secret from foreign lands. That is, until Chancellor Welliger was ordered by King Vendrick to grant the gifted blacksmith Lelowin a lifetime contract, whatever the cost, in order to introduce the rare alloy to Drang Lake. Ooh. I didn't know that that was a blacksmith. Okay. Cool. Um, and then we have Thrusting Sword of Chancellor Welliger, masterpiece of the great blacksmith Lelowin uh, that he brought along as a gift when he left Mira for Drang Lake. Armor reinforced with rare guy steel belong to Chancellor Williger. Quality equipment is, that is both light and strong, crafted by the ca uh, that is <laughs> both light and strong, crafted by the castle's resident master smith, Lewellyn. Lewellyn. I feel like I'm saying Lelowin, but it's Lewellyn. It's like a Welsh name. And supplied only to a select few. His work easily identified by its lack of ostentation. Lewellyn Focus solely on an economy of simplicity and strength. Well, let's see how Welliger fights. He doesn't fight. Okay. Good. Fair enough. I think we're pretty much done with the uh, um, drain like Welliger. There's no one. Oh, I mean, I guess we can defeat the. T There's two Milfinito we can destroy. I I actually don't know. Uh, what they drop or what they do or what goes on, so I guess let's try it. I guess we're probably gonna have to face these guys here. <laughs> Did 
the Ar the Arch Drake missed us. Okay. We hear a song in the distance. You rescued a Milfanita who was taken from us. I did. Take this. We, Milfanito, thank you. I got something for doing this, but... You quelled that cursed singing. I did. They may be of no use outside, but please, take these. <laughs> we get an awful lot of divine blessings. When we sing, but... Yeah, 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 we know that. Okay, I'm gonna kill you. Do you fight? I hope you fight. What did we ever do? I don't know. This seems terrible. It's so pathetic. Okay. You dropped nothing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And then we're going to go to the uh, place of resting or whatever, uh, Rise of the Dead. And we're going to take out the Milfanito that we talked to there. And then we have Grave Warden Agdane. There's a lot of NPCs in this game. Okay. Do we still have to fight this pyromancer? Yes. Talk to this to see if there's any new dialogue. The little ones will yep, we know that. The little ones yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna kill you, unfortunately. You don't fight, do you? What will you do to us? I'm just gonna kill you. This is terrible. Okay. And again, they gave us nothing and it was for nothing. Sorry about that. All right, so we shall see. Um, so I was wondering if um, Agdane from the undead crypt would be at mad us because we lit those things so i guess we'll see once and for all right here what oh what oh it's things so at the very least those uh those spirits should be around okay torch bro uh i guess we'll take you around again Okay. Mm 
drop the other shield? No. Oh god, this is gonna be terrible. Oh my god. This is terrible. I <clears throat> I should never have lit that lit that. Well, I shouldn't be so brazen as to <laughs> run in here, but uh, yeah, I didn't realize that I would constantly be fighting these stupid things. Okay, well that one's dead. I'm really confused. I'm really confused as to like when they appear and when they don't appear. So I thought that like once you killed them, they were gone, but like I feel like the ones that I've killed like appeared again. So I mean I can I can definitely kill these. Ugh. Like I kinda wanna keep Torch Bro alive, but Yeah, it's like, he's going to get backlash. Yeah. Like, I killed Torch Bro before I could kill this guy even completely. Oh, Imperious Helm. That's right, they also have a, a set. Helmet worn by once proud knights, relics of a party who long ago attempted to conquer the undead crypt. For this act of conceit, they will never rest in peace and instead serve as crypt guardians. Eh, it's a weak story. Okay, well we're just gonna come out, and we're gonna try to. What could he drop? Oh, huh. interesting. Wonder if you can farm those. Okay. So I'm gonna run over here. Let's see who comes out and we can fight separately. not coming, is he? Okay. Okay, now you're coming. Fragrant Branch of Yore. Insolent Gloves. Oh, so they're part of the ones that tried to conquer. I thought it was just those big guys, but... I mean, this is crazy, but it's a little bit <laughs> more manageable than what happened in the, f in the first game. I mean, it was easier to run through here or whatever, but like if you, ooh, Dark Quartz Ring plus two, can you get like infinity of those or is that just like, huh? I don't know, it's like, 
if you take it out one at a time, I mean, I think you're good to, I don't know. Maybe it was just as easy. Okay, so does Agnane, is he mad at us? Human, do not produce light. Light and all the... Yeah, well, um, I'm just going to do it because that's what we're trying to do right now. Oh, you don't care. Okay. Does he? Is this? I warned you. Okay. You offended the dead, and now you are the one. Okay. We gotta make sure to not anger uh, Agdane too much. Because I want to see his fighting style. He has the Black Crypt Sword. Is that it? Do we defeat all the Grave Wardens? Fight the black crypt sword. Uh, black crypt sword from. Uh... The incident will be punished. Okay. You can come over here. You just gonna walk over there. Oh, you're just there. You're like I want to walk to this place and just stand there. Okay. That's interesting. What is that position? Okay. Oh my. Damn it. Okay. Okay, well, at least those red phantoms should be dead. I know we're going a little over here. Oh, what? A backstab. Kills them, but oh, come on. Yeah, that's very reminiscent of the uh no, the Sentinel Knights in in Orlando. Wow. Yeah, we just can get infinite dark quartz ring twos. I that's kind of weird. Uh, they should be mad at us now. So
guess we fight him now. Alright, well we saw what he's capable of, so I'm just going to kill him outright. The incident will be punished. Oh, God. Oh, gosh! Ugh. All right, I think we got him. So what's interesting, oh, what? No damage. So we got the Crypt Black Sword from the old Dead One Soul, and that's what he's using here. But then when we kill him, oh, they fixed that. Never mind. Kill worn by Agnate of the Undead Crypt, life itself is suffering, or karma, as some have called it. The embrace of death awaits all things, but does death mean an end to suffering? Uh, I don't want to, like, you know, devolve this um, <laughs> video game to a discussion of Buddhist philosophy, but um, I think that, you know, most people have a incorrect view of uh, karma as to what it means, including Japanese people that grow up with the concept of Buddhism regularly, but uh, I guess we can talk about that another time. Uh, Navlon, we can kill. Let's do that. Yeah, this is going to be a long episode, you know, that's just what's going to happen. All right. Karma is often represented in media as poetic justice. Good get the good, bad get the bad. But that's not really... I, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm no authority, of course, but I, uh, I consider myself, you know, at least somewhat versed in the, the ways of Buddhism, and uh, it, from what I've seen, that doesn't have anything to do with it. But that's a whole other topic. I haven't said anything. I have absolutely no intention of leaving here. Oh, it's Do interesting. Not attempt to help me. Just let me sit here. Yeah, well, we helped you already. Please. Uh, can I aggro him here? Okay, no. Let me free him. And I don't have to worry about him invading me because I'm not going to, like, go forward here. Like, he invades and all these keep and the shrine and all that stuff. So let's see if we can defeat him here. Although, I don't know if there's a different message if he's ho if you're hollow, if you talk to him or whatnot. I don't know. Let's check it out. By the very gods, what have you done? Okay, so... Died. You'll never escape him. <laughs> I wonder if you're hollow if he speaks. Oh, so you can still buy stuff from him here. Huh. I wonder if you're hollow, he says something different. What are you doing? You are most intriguing. <laughs> Probably gonna die here. <laughs> yeah, he's just like a, a sorcerer, he doesn't have any weapon.
And we already had the chaos hood because that's what he was wearing. All right. I mean, the other quote unquote NPC is the ancient dragon. We're obviously not going to kill him. Well, I don't want to kill him. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, all these guys. Let's kill these guys. I don't think they have any bearing on the story. Um, although, I'm going to want to re... I'm going to want to re... Uh, stat, so... Maybe we should just call it a day. It's already an hour and 20 into this episode. Um, but we should just um, say, good job, we did it, we killed everyone that we wanted to, and then everyone else we will kill uh, once we've like finished the DLC and all that. I think the DLC is all that we need to do. So, anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next episode, whenever that is.